Oh, hello everyone, Dylan here of, or Dylan of Dill Days here. Happy Throwback Thursday, and the rotation leads us to my first LEGO Exo Force review for Throwback Thursdays, of course. Well, expect some, expect the rest every other Throwback Thursday, of course, but yeah. And so this one is on uh, Grand Titan and Stealth Hunter from 2006, of course. So on the front of the manual for just one have the Lego and Exo Force logos and a uh, manga styled uh, depiction of Takeshi, of course, and picture of the set running above some like bridge there linking the mountain together, and also Adria, and also set number 7701, and some nice artwork strip down below. And flip to the back, how shows the online survey there was. And also for like magazines and Lego Club and all, and then add for the combiner model, which, which kind of a hard time trying to find the instructions for that. But if you still can find the instructions, comment down below. And then some nice artwork of some of the sets here, and also all of these, which do expect for future throwback Thursdays. But yeah, and then. All the pieces that come with the set and the final building steps. So first of all, so now onto the two mini pigs. Well, the mini pigs that come with both sets. We which have for Stealth Hunter is. Uh, Hikaru and for Grand Titan, uh, Takeshi. Which, as you see, their torso printing quite good for the times, but while also a little minimalistic, like as so, I like as you see, not only like printing to them, but of course, they're earlier figs, so kind of makes sense. But as for the face print of him, of which. Well, mostly Takeshi's, as you can see, which do have the like anime style kind of eyes and faces. Yes, but although kind of close to that of like the uh, uh, Star Wars Clone Wars uh, minifig lines, but then of course, if you're familiar with the Avatar Last Airbender lines, well, or just the pair of sets for that, well, yeah, but also these fig. Which do have these own specific hair pieces that were specific to this line. And if I take off one of these, it's they're kind of a soft rubber type material. But although they do kind of tend to loosen up a bit over time. But, but yeah. But whereas for the Hikaru's here in particular, which I do which I see people oftentimes use on some custom figs from like Dragon Ball and also Rick from Rick and Morty and so on. But all the Takeshi's you can kind of bit use on some figs nowadays if you wanted. But yeah. And that whereas for the back sides of it, as you see, not only back printing since they're older figures. And of course, whereas with the Carlos, you can kind of see a little bit of his double side face there. Which if I turn these around then you get a good view of the double side face all of these you can definitely use on some like special anime themed uh mini figs nowadays of course but aside from that I do wish that this hair piece would have had a little bit more to uh, cover that up but yeah and also this hair piece did also come in black and was used on the first nightwing in the DC line, of course, but yeah. But aside from that, still all right, me things, but yeah. This first off, which is probably the star mech of this line, of which the Stealth Hunter, it was a quite cool set. Although, for how it's built, kind of a bit resembling both an amp suit from Avatar 
avatar or Pandora type avatar, and also mixed with like Gundams and all. And although I do think they did so pretty well, but if they did some of these nowadays, I think they'd probably be almost similar. But yeah. Uh, hang on. And so now from like as always, start from the ground up. Which, as you see, these be uh, which good symmetry to them, but although do have a couple stickers on them, which a little thing to note with these XO4 sets, a lot of them came with a whole lot of stickers. So, which, as seen in the back of this manual, it shows where to put the stickers on, but at but at the last part of it instead of throughout the build, probably because uh, probably to save a bit of irritation or or annoyance or whatever. But yeah. But back onto this set. But whereas the feet made of the jagged slope, of large jagged slope pieces, they're done quite well. For, and as for the leg, or lower legs, which do have kind of a bit of bulk to them, but like with this main symbol and the Japanese writing symbols, of course. And also the classic uh, plain wingtail pieces, but used as side fins there. And then the upper legs of which with those like uh, car rim kind of pieces there are also with those odd stickers on them that say caution on them and as for one arm bit which is comprised of like two of these uh, sword pieces from the Knights Kingdom 2 line and of course with a large tile on it that says short danger, sharp edges, of course. As, and as for the other armor, which would also as much interesting, like as you can see, comprised of like what we usually use know as the like a uh, half of a borak headpiece and bionicle, but used as part of the gun, which and do have the like support pieces, which can definitely be well worked as uh, gum barrels to, as well and of course you have the fiber optic uh, tube piece there which runs into the back which I'll go over in a minute but yeah and as for the middle part of which which is comprised of a couple of curved slopes on here and also a couple of technic pins work used as uh, gum barrels as well so good amount of firepower to it, and also a plain cockpit piece, oh whoops, which, although sometimes these do kind of fall, fall off a bit, well, unless if you treat it nicely, well, for that, can like flip right down and a couple of studs to sit a mini pig on too, and also that piece there, which of course is the light brick. Which let me put him on, and does fit quite well in there. And whereas from the back part of which, which does have some has this like te these technique beams here in this one in the center, which if you pull that up and it would light the light brick in it, which if you can barely see there. Let me take him out. As you see, is barely much lighting up, which travels onto there. So, I guess it can kind of vary if, however, how you buy it. But yeah. And as for the top part of this mech, as you can see, it does have a holy plate on there, and also this little rod sticking out, probably as antenna or indicate where the light brick is. And do have an extra rocket and satellite dish on top. And from the top part of which have these extra long uh, jaggeds or smooth slopes, but on a couple of rotating uh, parts there. And with a dot zero one, not sure what for. And of course, this still kind of resembles that wings of most Gungan, of course. And as for the articulation of this mech, 
that make arms of which do go in and outwards, fully rotatable, and the uh, legs also much of that, and the but the feet do have do swivel in and out, so you can get some good posability with that. So it, the posability kind of close to that of the like uh, Knights Kingdom figures that I have that am or have previously reviewed for Throwback Thursdays. But at least this does almost as well as up to that. But yeah, and that is about it with Stealth Hunter. And now on to Grand Titan, which is almost as much cool as the Stealth Hunter, which I see comprised of mostly red and light gray with a bit of black into it, of course. And it's now for how it what it brings a witch. Lives defeated, which kind of similar to some Max words like three different jagged slopes but in three different directions but with this of which it has a few stickers on it of course and whereas move up a bit the lower legs of which kind of similar to that of stealth hunters a bit but just with a lot of red going on and also not have the wing bits that's off the side so at least there's a good bit of symmetry on both legs and upper legs of which which are just those like car hood pieces is there but at least it's fine they're fine and as for the uh, center uh, canopy piece which, as you can see, still kind of similar, which has a couple of jagged slopes with stickers on it, and also one of them, like, other cockpit canopy pieces with on a hinge bit, and also a couple of trans or trans yellow uh, cone pieces acting as blasters on it. And, of course, you can, like, tilt it up, and then have a couple studs on there to fit your Takeshi minifig onto, of course, and does fit well, of course. And as for the arms of which, it's the same kind of way as uh, Stealth Hunter did, but except that the blade weapon for this arm of which is just a like little pincher claw, and the uh, which blade weapons here are which reused from a uh, Toa Metru Matau and Bionicle, but in red, so nice for mocking, of course, so some of these sets did have, came with plenty of Bionicle pieces, but recolored and all. And as for the other armor, which kind of similar to the other, but a little bit smaller for that, which, as you see, does have a multi-shot barrel on it. And for you, that you can just spin around. And of course, and it does have some bit of Japanese writing on it. Well, and also explosive on one side, of course. And as for on the back side, which does have the same feature going on, where you pull it and the light brick lights up. Or, well, specific type light brick for this. Well, as you can barely much see, but I think that's just because it's mine, but yours could kind of vary. But as for the upper part of this uh, middle canopy part is have a couple of those larger uh, slope pieces, but at least with some different stickers on it, and one of which has the main home mountain that the whole story goes on. And also does have same kind of thing as the other did, but also to indicate where the light brick is, but also contains a little wrench piece. So, so probably so you can fix it easily. And also above are a couple of rocket launchers going on, but at least they're just for show, but yeah. 
depends on you. Zoom out. And so now onto the articulate, which is quite about like the other one, but except the shoulder parts do swivel up and down and go in and outwards, but are hindered by these part bits. And the claw bit does swivel well, around, of course, and this also does so, but not go outwards, but doesn't swivel outwards, kind of a downer. And the legs of which, same amount of posability as the others, of course, but yeah. And so now, on to the final verdict. So overall, these I think are quite good cool sets for for both the time and still a bit now. Like, at least as a sort of bit inspired by Gundams, but just a little bit different, but yeah. But although, and of course for the price point they were at back in the day, like $15 each, you got plenty of good stuff going on. Yes, although... They, but although different colors kind of vary a bit, but at least they're still workable. But and those do get, uh, and of course a couple of really good recolors of pieces like both blade bits for that. But yeah, and also whereas, well, at least they're kind of a sign of the times where something large like this, quite good for fifteen dollars. But nowadays, some. It, something at fifteen dollars is this much smaller, but yeah. But at least they're still quite good sets for if they were made now, but yeah. And so now if you're looking to get these sets, or I mean if you still have these sets from back in the day, well I hope you had some good memories of them. And for those of you who haven't and still have access to these sets, I'd say definitely pick them up. eBay Bricklink, whatever. And that's it for this video. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.